Angel, is our Bishop Snyder? Angel, without spaces. That's the name of this channel. Without spaces at checkout. Perhaps you've seen this already. If not, we have breaking news. Bishop Athanasius Schneider has issued a letter where he is directly responding to the accusation leveled by Father James Altman that. Francis is not a pope, and not just a pope, he is not the pope. James Altman, Father James Altman, made this statement twice in the last two months, and the second time much more clearly. He laid out a case of 20 points. Some of them are governance issues, but many of them are what Father James Altman calls heresies. And he says that Francis is not the pope. In the way he described it was that Bergoglio is not the pope. Those were his words, and he said that we have no duty to follow him and that we are to oppose him. Bishop Athanasius Schneider issued a letter that was published by the Remnant on late on Monday night that challenges that, to put it mildly. He goes over the doctrinal disputes. He even invokes St. Robert Bellarmine and does point out that St. Robert Bellarmine's position has never been the position of the church, that it has been a theological opinion, but a theory, not actually a magisterial teaching of the church. And I will say that this is, I've seen shades of this in other places, in other debates. Often you'll see this in the modesty debate online. You will see people contradicting what pre-conciliar popes had to say on the subject, and post-conciliar popes, by invoking more stricter standards of things invoked by saints and doctors of the church, but whose statements, while not contradictions of the faith and therefore dangerous, do contradict formal teachings of popes and other magisterial authorities. We have this inclination at times to confuse what doctors of the church and saints have said as being magisterially binding when that is not the case. Whether that is the case here or not, I'll let you decide. It's not my job to tell you what to think. I'm going to just give you here what Bishop Schneider said in his letter, and I'll do it here in full here in just a moment. If you would like to read the letter for yourself, I will have a link to it in today's show notes at returntotradition.org. There's a blinking arrow on the screen here for those of you watching it here on YouTube. You can go to that website, get a, click the link to it. I'm sure it's also prominently displayed on the Remnants website where this letter was originally published. I do suggest you read it. This is an important letter because it is an important debate here that's going on. Now, it is worth noting that Bishop Schneider never one time mentions Father James Altman by name. But we all know who he's talking about. That statement by Father Altman completely upended things in the traditional and conservative Catholic world. And Bishop Schneider has basically taken a position of being a voice of reason in that world while still holding to possibly the hardest line position among any of the better bishops. Here in this, in this letter, you're going to actually hear him refer to heretical popes as evil. Calls them evil. There's an implication he's making there. He never one time says he disagrees with any of the observations that Father Altman says in this letter. Instead, he says that the final conclusion is, in, is incorrect, that he reminds people that what the Church has always said is that no one can judge the Pope. Here is Bishop Schneider in response to Father Altman. On the validity of the pontificate of Pope Francis by Bishop Athanasius Schneider. There is no authority to declare or consider an elected and generally accepted pope as an invalid pope. The constant practice of the church makes it evident that even in the case of an invalid election, this invalid election will be de facto healed through the general acceptance of the newly elected by the overwhelming majority of the cardinals and bishops. Even in the case of a heretical pope, he will not lose his office automatically, and there is no body within the church to declare him deposed because of heresy. Such actions would come close to a kind of heresy of conciliarism or episcopalianism. The heresy of conciliarism or episcopalism says basically that there is a body within the church, ecumenical council, synod, college of cardinals, college of bishops, which can issue a legally binding judgment over the pope. The theory of the automatic loss of the papacy due to heresy remains only an opinion, 
And even St. Robert Bellarmine noted this and did not present it as a teaching of the magisterium itself. The perennial papal magisterium never taught such an opinion. In 1917, when the Code of Canon Law came into force, the magisterium of the Church eliminated from the new legislation the remark of the Decretum Gratiani and the old Corpus Iuris Canonici, which stated that a pope who deviates from right doctrine can be deposed. Never in history, the magisterium of the Church did admit any canonical procedures or deposition of a heretical pope. The Church has no power over the pope formally or judicially. The sure Catholic tradition says that in the case of a heretical pope, the members of the Church can avoid it, resist him, refuse to obey him, all of which can be done without requiring a theory or opinion. That says that a heretical pope automatically loses his office or can be deposed consequently. Therefore, being it so, we must follow the surer way and abstain from defending the merely opinion of theologians, even be them saints like St. Robert Bellarmine, which says that a heretical pope automatically loses his office or can be deposed by the church if therefore. The pope cannot commit heresy when he speaks ex cathedra, that this is a dogma of the faith. In his teaching outside of ex cathedra statements, however, he can commit doctrinal ambiguities, errors, and even heresies. And since the pope is not identical with the entire church, the church is stronger than a singular erring or heretical pope. In such a case, one should respectfully correct him, avoiding purely human angered and disrespectful language. Resist him as one would resist a bad father of a family. Yet the members of a family cannot declare their evil father deposed from the fatherhood. They can correct him, refuse to obey him, separate themselves from him, but they cannot declare him deposed. Good Catholics know the truth and must proclaim it, offer reparation for the errors of an erring pope. Since the case of a heretical pope is humanly irresolvable, we must implore with supernatural faith a divine intervention, because that singular erring pope is not eternal, but temporal, and the church is not in our hands, but in the almighty hands of God. We must have enough supernatural faith, trust, humility, spirit of the cross, in order to endure such an extraordinary trial. In such relatively short situations, in comparison to 2,000 years, we must not yield to a too human reaction to an easy solution, declaring the invalidity of his pontificate, but must keep sobriety, keep a cool head, and at the same time, a true supernatural view and trust in divine intervention and in the indestructibility of the church. Signed, Bishop Athanasius Schneider. Now, I imagine that many of you did not like what you heard there. I don't really blame you for it. There is an inclination that many people have. They want a solution to this because, as some will point out from set of contests and others, they were always the first to say this. The resisting a pope seems to be an untraditional position. And now that isn't strictly speaking true. There have been examples in history of bishops and saints taking the points of opposition against pontiffs, but nothing like what we see today. But we we are in a unique situation often likened to the heresy launched by Arius in the 4th century, except that even in those days, the pontiffs were mostly against the heresy promoted by him, so by Arius and his followers, with the exception of one pope who was the first to not ever be canonized. But that's another story for another time. Point being here is we are in a unique situation. And the set of a contest response is, I think, a valid one, where they say the resisting a person you recognize as Pope doesn't make a lot of sense either, because that's not a Catholic position. That position needs to be addressed, I think, by Bishop Schneider. Bishop Schneider should answer that, that response, because many of us are waiting for the response to that. A good response that isn't just, well, what else are we supposed to do? Because that's where we're at at this point. But I'm curious what you have to say about this. Did you find Bishop Schneider's position to be lacking? Did you not like it? Do you agree with him? Do you agree with him while also in a kind of a weird way where you feel torn? Agree with Father James Altman. And that wish that some more of these bishops would come out and address Father Altman's uh, statement and then actually respond and say, give people something with what they're supposed to do, aside from essentially hanging tight and hoping that the next pope corrects things. I want to know what you have to say. So let me know in the comments, and please, if you're going to have a debate in the comments, have it be a respectful discourse. 
I don't want to see people coming in there say, well, you're not a real Catholic if you resist the Pope, or you're not a real Catholic if you are a set of contests. I don't want to see that joke in the comments, please. So please have a respectful debate in the comments. Let me know what you think. We're all trying to figure this out together, I think. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. So to share this on social media, it helps too. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria. Angel. 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 You're not judging the Pope, right? You're just condemning the Pope. We do, we're not going to follow the Pope, okay? Okay, Angel. We just, we have our own uh, good teacher, Father Altman. Just do the uh, the right way, okay, Angel, baby.